Okay, ladies and gents, today I've been asked to recreate a text-based tutorial on animation inside of a photo. Now, this particular, um, this particular tutorial was originally done by uh, Gary Priester and can be found at this uh, web address. Um, I'll pause there for a second for you to, uh, to retype it, but uh, you can pause the video and do that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go to that web address, and this is it right here. This is um, the, uh, the original Zara Zone, and it was one of the workbooks, uh, workbook number 79, and this was the fourth page of the workbook. And it was uh, an animation inside of a photo. And um, so I'm going to convert this text-based uh, uh, tutorial into a, a, a video-based one. So the first thing I need to do is get this particular um, image, and it tells you that you can pick it up uh, from the uh, from the designs gallery. But uh, they've Zara have changed the designs gallery over time, and since this is a, a new version of the software, I don't have that anymore. So one of the nice things is, is that Gary has provided uh, this link here to see what the finished um, finished product looks like, and uh, when I have that. Um, web address that he uh, that he provided for um, this particular uh, animation. I can just use a little trick that I know in uh, in Zara to import from the web, import text and graphics from the web that's under the file menu. If I click that and paste in my uh, URL and press the import button, I'm going to get all kinds of uh, whatever text and graphics there are on that particular web page. Now, there are a few things here, um, and I'll just show you that there are some things sitting on top of this. And that's basically what we're going to do as well, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete what's on top because all I want is this particular uh, piece to work with. So now that I have that, um, Gary's tutorial tells me to create a um, a rectangle over the top of this uh, rounded prism here and to make it 215 215 by 200 pixels and I've got that there and if I press enter then I've got that exactly how I want it and he tells me to go ahead and make it white and to make it semi-transparent so that I can see where it is so I've gone ahead and clicked on the transparency button and made it flat transparency and I can see now um, where this particular uh, rectangle is over my graphic. And I'm just going to nudge it a little bit until I get it where I want. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, I've got a little bit of space up both above, below, and to each side, so that's perfect. Then he tells me to change the transparency from... Oh, uh, the last thing that I, before I move on. He also tells me to make sure on the positioning that the X and Y pers uh, position and the height and width are whole numbers. Now you can see that this particular X position is not a whole number, so I'm going to just change that. I'm just going to erase the 0.5 on the end of that. And now I, you can see that this no longer has any decimal places behind it, neither does this. So that is exactly as we want it. And so is the height and width it's in whole numbers. So that looks perfect. It's still positioned uh, uh, well. So now he tells me to, with the this uh, white rectangle um, still highlighted, I'm going to change. It's still flat transparency. I'm going to change the transparency from 50% all the way to 100%, so you can't even see it anymore. And then I'm going to click on the um, selector tool, and with the rectangle still selected, I'm going to go ahead and go to the arrange menu and. Uh, and create a bitmap copy right there. Create a bitmap copy and change this from true color plus alpha to just true color. And then you can see that I get a, a bitmap copy of this, uh, just the rounded, um, the rounded, uh, what's it called? Prism, thank you. Uh, then I'm gonna click the create button and that will give me this, uh, this little prism over here that I can, uh, um, or this copy of the prism that I can, I can then use. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just moving it off to the side so I can, I can work with it a little bit. 
is press Control K to clone it. And then I'm going to use my um, my little zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom right down onto this particular object because that's what I'm going to be working with. Now remember, there are two of these uh, images, one on top of the other. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my shape editor tool to go around the edges of this at the cardinal points and create a shape based off of this particular prism, the edges of it. I'm just going around and around until I get, where does that go to? Up there, there, and there, and that's probably not perfect, but it is what it is. So I've got uh, a white shape on top, and I've got one of the two, I just held down the shift key and, and uh, clicked on the, the photograph behind it, so now I've got the shape and the photo. You can see here down in the bottom it says two objects on layer mouse off selected. And when I have both of those, I'm gonna to go to my handy intersect shapes button over here. So, uh, if you don't have that, you can find that in the, um, in the arrange menu, arrange, combine shapes, intersect shapes, or just press control three. And once I've done that, I have now have another shape on here, and it's just the same shape as as uh, um, the shape that I just drew. And I know that sounds confusing, but now that it's selected, I'm just going to hold down the shift key and press uh, the right arrow button a few times, and you can see that I have um, just this prism in a shape on top of the photo. All right, so that's perfect. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out to my page. And I'm going to select both of those photos, right? And you see down here I have two photos on layer mouse off selected. And I'm going to press Control C to copy them to the clipboard. And then I'm going to say File, New, and then I want to create an animation. So I'm going to click Animation. And then now that I have that here, I'm going to press Control V to get these into my animation. And I'm gonna put them up in the upper right hand corner and then I'm going to slide, select the edges of my animation and move them exactly up to the size of my, of my uh, drawing. All right, so now I have one frame that is exactly what I, what I want. And now I'm going to go ahead and copy that frame three times, all right? And I'm going to make changes to my individual frames. So the first frame, I'm going to leave by itself according to, to this tutorial. And if I go down, it tells me to, do, um, to, to leave the first one alone. And then the other things, it wants me to just change the color on. All right, so here you can see it. Frame one, no effect. Frame two, green to blue. Frame three, RBG to BRG. And frame four, RBG to GBR. So to do that, I'm going back to my animation, going to frame two. And remember, frame two says green to blue. So I, I'm going to select my animation here and just the the clipped photo right it's just that one on top and then I'm going to um, go to and this is differs from the uh, um, tutorial because uh, they've changed the way um, or where some of these things are in uh, in uh, um, in the newer versions okay so the two the original web tutorial was based on an older version, and this, I'm showing you how to do this with Zara Designer Pro uh, X9. So I want to go to the photo um, flyout and choose the FX. And once I've done that, I'm going to go new, because I want a new um, uh, FX filter on there. And then I'm going to go down, go down to color filter, and then channels, and it was green to blue. All right, so that is my change for, for 
for frame two. Then frame three, I need to go RBG to BRG. So I'm gonna go back to my tutorial. I'm changing to frame three, choosing the same uh, um, cutout of the, uh, of the prism, going back to FX. I still have it selected, so I'm going back down to color filter, uh, channels, RBG to BRG is the one that I want. So I've done that. I'm just going back to check again, RBG to BRG. That's great. And then frame four is RBG to GBR. So going back, selecting frame four, selecting the cutout, giving it a new filter, RBG to GBR. There we go, selecting that. All right, and that is pretty much it. Once that I have that, I can go ahead and preview a GIF animation. And this is what it looks like. And then once that I have that exported, and I can do that by going up here and clicking one of these export buttons, either an animated GIF or a, or a flash, a Swift, um, then all I have to do is place it in the correct position on my uh, on my background photo, which is right here. And that's it. That's, uh, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, it's fairly simple, fairly easy to, to do. Uh, and um, once you have your, uh, um, your animation created, it's easy to place it on your photo for your, um, for your website or whatever it is, whatever way you want to present this on your computer. Uh, anyway, I hope you found that useful and interesting, and we'll come back and see us next time.